delightful viewers, welcome to Models of Success, featuring Munir Bashir, the King of Oud. As one of the most prominent musicians in the Middle East during the 20th century, Munir Bashir was among the first Middle Eastern instrumentalists to gain popularity in Europe and the United States. His music brought out the essence of the oud, a musical instrument commonly used in Middle Eastern cultures. Munir Bashir was regarded as the greatest oud player of all time and the supreme master of the Arab Makamat scale system. Bashir was born in Mosul in northern Iraq to an Assyrian father and Kurdish mother. When he was just five years old, his father showed Munir and his brother Jamil the basics of the Arab lute. Together with his brother, six-year-old Munir Bashir started his musical training at the Baghdad Institute of Music, founded in 1934 by the notable Iraqi musicologist Sharif Muhaddin Haida Taryan. To discover more about the life and musical treasures of Munir Bashir, Supreme Master Television spoke with Dr. Laurent Aubert, who has personally worked with the legendary oud player. Dr. Aubert, an ethnomusicologist, accomplished musician and creator of the Ethnographic Museum in Geneva, Switzerland. He is also director of Atelier d'Ethnomusicologie Institute, which organizes performances, festivals and concerts celebrating traditional music from all over the world. He belonged to a family of musicians. His brother Jamil was also a very good wood player. And uh, so both of them learned the classical makam tradition of Iraq and uh, then listened very much to other ways of playing in this uh, makam music in other parts of the Arab world, including in Turkey, in Iran, and neighboring countries. Munir was a natural, quickly mastering the oud and rising as a virtuoso performer and recording artist. Wishing to keep the beautiful musical culture of his beloved homeland alive, Munir Bashir focused on documenting and preserving Iraq's traditional musical styles. While serving as music director in Iraq's broadcasting company, he also began teaching at the newly founded Académie des Beaux-Arts in Baghdad in 1951. There was a sort of alchemical process uh, in the case of Munir that he was just getting rid of all the unnecessary uh, aspects of music uh, to get, I would say, really to the root of it. Mm. Each makam has a certain feeling, has a certain uh, mood, and he would totally concentrate on this mood and uh, on the beauty also of the melodies and of the improvisations. The improvisation is part of the tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, what they call taksim, which means uh, instrumental improvisation, is maybe the, the deepest aspect of this music, which is being here and now, it's the music of the present moment. And uh, so the melodies he would refer to when he plays well, were just in order to go further and further on in, in this uh, deep improvisation. Munir Bashir's exceptional musical ability soon gained recognition in Lebanon, and in 1953 he arrived in Beirut to teach as well as accompany the legendary Lebanese chanteurs Farouz in performances. That year, Munir Bashir's unique career as a soloist gained further recognition with his first soloist performance in Istanbul, Turkey. In the years that followed, the gifted musician was featured on Iraqi television, and in 1957, he started touring around Europe. He played on his own. Sometimes in the beginning of his career, he, he, he played with groups, his own group, with instrumentalists, even sometimes with singers. But most of his career, he was soloist, oh, really? without even a percussion instrument. He had a lot of influence on many other oud players and uh, musicians in general in the Arab world that would refer to this approach and develop very much. Before him, usually, instrumentalists 
in a group would have maybe a five minute solo in a concert just to show off what they can play. But this idea of really developing a purely solo recital with sometimes you could play one piece, one makam for half an hour, one hour even, and that was really new. So that's why it's both extremely traditional in the spirit and very contemporary in the approach, and this is why he, he was a great musician. Meneer Bashir enthralled audiences with his individuality and amazing variability in expression through the oud. Through his talents, he strived to preserve his homeland's musical heritage. He was a very paradoxical person because he was at, at the time very, very rooted in the deep tradition of the oud, of the uh, Arabic lute. And revolutionary musically means that he was not making any concession to to fashion to styles to modernity and he was himself very modern in the sense that uh, he would not compromise for example with, with any facility and any kind of playing that would attract to a greater audience he was somehow purely in a music that had a meditative uh, approach and uh, uh, feeling. For example, he would never accept microphones in a concert. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, even if, if the hall was, was very large, uh, he would say people just have to keep quiet and really to listen, and then they will get the message. Seeking to further his musical scope, Munir Bashir travelled to Budapest, Hungary, where he studied at the Franz Liszt Conservatory under the supervision of Hungarian composer, ethnomusicologist, linguist and philosopher Sultan Kudai. He completed his doctorate in musicology in 1965. That was one way he could do a lot at that time for the survival, for the renewal of Iraqi traditional music, not only for his own music, but for mm -hmm. all the, the forms uh, of the Iraqi makam, which is absolutely wonderful music. Thanks to him, this music was known outside, and uh, we organized once a festival of uh, music in the Arab world, where he came with a whole delegation of classical music, folk music, dance, and also his solo was there. And th that was very important at that time, and it opened many doors to Iraqi music and to Arab music in general, I guess, in the West. Munir Bashir's exceptional mastery of Arab classical music's Makamat Tono system attracted audiences throughout Europe and the world. I hosted him for his second and third concerts in, in Geneva. And he even made a CD of uh, this 72 concert. Yes. And so that was the re revelation of Munir Bashir in the West. And then we went on with, uh, also with some colleagues in France and in Germany to contribute that uh, he's better known in the West. I invited him twice, in fact, in the 70s and 80s, in halls which had about uh, three to five hundred uh, seats, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they were not very large, but, but still quite large for a, a solo instrument, which is not very loud in itself yes. without microphones. But the, the result was quite astonishing because people would be so silent and so receptive to his music that finally uh, he was right. That's the best way to transmit music. I think in this way to revendicate this uh, purely classical touch, which was getting lost uh, at the time he started, because all musicians would compromise with Western harmony, with the pop music, with the folk music, just to sell. And he would never do that. And in that sense, many people in the Arab world and outside discovered this sort of purity, I would say, existing in Iraqi music. Mene 
Amir Bashir's music was a synthesis of all the traditional styles of Arab music, Turkish, Kurdish, Iranian and Mediterranean influences. He befriended musicians from around the world and found his inspiration in diverse music of all cultures, becoming founder and director of the Babylon International Festival. I remember he organized a, a conference, music conference and festival in Baghdad in 1978 and I had the chance to be invited there and uh, he would invite specialists from all over the world and that, that was his idea. Yes. To create links, to create net, networks mm -hmm. uh, between musicians who were in the same feeling. For example, he had a lot of attraction for for Renaissance music, Baroque music from Europe, or medieval music. He loved Indian classical music, and uh, so that was also part of his source of inspiration. Not only did Munir Bashir excel as a musician, he was also a nurturing father. One of his sons is a very good uh, musician, Omar Bashir. He's quite a young musician, but very talented. I know that he learned everything from his father, mm -hmm. and then also he developed his own ways, uh, doing some more modern music and classical music. They even played duet, and uh, I was involved in the production of a CD of duet between Munir and his son Omar Bashir, which came out about 15 years ago. During an interview with Supreme Master Television, Omar shared more about his father and what it was like to be the only student of the legendary Munir Bashir. طبعا انا ولدت في عائله موسيقيه عائلات دائما كنا نسمع موسيقى في البيت كان والدي منير بشير يسمعني الى موسيقى شعوب العالم وتراث البلدان العالم لاكون اكثر غني في الموسيقى حتى انفتح الى العالم اكثر فاستماع الى موسيقى شعوب العالم هي تعتبر من اهم الدراسة الأولية للموسيقي حتى يكون يعرف كيف يربط العود أو يربط موسيقى مع أي موسيقى من أي بلد ثاني حتى نؤكد أنه الموسيقى هي لغة موحدة بين الشعوب العالم. In 1986, Omar and his father founded a band which played traditional Iraqi music without vocals. من 24 عازف من آلات تراثية عراقية بحتة تقدم التراث العراقي والتراث العربي وممكن مرات كنا نعزف موسيقى تركية كان الشغل جدا صعب لتشتغل مع 24 فنان ولكن حققنا نجاح كبير الحمد لله في تركيا في فرنسا في عراق في الأردن في عدة بلدان كانت هذه أول فرقة في الوطن العربي مكونة من 24 عازف تقدم تراث موسيقي بدون غناء فقط موسيقى Munir Bashir received a number of international recognitions for his musical opus and his contributions to bridging cultures he was a member of honor of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO International Music Council or IMC, of which he had served as Vice President. Munir Bashir was also knighted in the French Legion of Honor and was Secretary General of the Arabian Music Academy in Baghdad. He was the leader and uh, he had a strong character and he would not compromise with anything. But uh, also he, 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 in his friendships he, he was somebody you could trust. He was very kind. He, he was uh, like a patriarch, you know, somehow. Uh -huh. And uh, so when you were with him, you, mostly you listened and asked questions. And I will always remember him as a great personality, you know. As part of my work being organizing concerts, sometimes you just meet extraordinary people, and he was one of them. We thank Dr. Laurent Aubert for sharing his insightful knowledge about the King of Oud, 
Munir Bashir will always be remembered as a musical peacemaker for his dedication to spreading the true elements of Arabian music. His compositions and works are a precious addition to the rich cultures of the world. Thank you for joining us today on Models of Success. May your life be coloured by the graceful melodies and illuminating light of the divine. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash mos 